Welcome to the 20th edition of the Weber Cup from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. The annual 10-pin showdown between the US and Europe, featuring two four-man teams representing the very best from each side of the Atlantic. The Weber Cup is 10-pin's answer to the Ryder Cup. Before we join the action from this year's event, here's a reminder of what happened when the teams last contested the trophy back in 2018. It's rolled around again. Here we are, Weber Cup 19. So good Robbie first blood to Europe. Oh, Barrett's got that ball working. That wraps it up. Well, let's see. Troop can make the adjustment. Oh my goodness, he's got it. But with a huge slice of luck. Can he provide the win here? Yeah. Oh, what he can't do is that. Now that's a mental mistake. But it's been an easy night for Chris Barnes. The Americans have been simply unstoppable. The fans have made their decision. It's going to be Carl Troop against Jesper Svensson. What a huge morale booster this could be. This to win the point for Team Europe. And he's nailed it. He's done it. So this is the ball of the match. Oh, my goodness. Simonson looks to just close the door on this one and does exactly that. So big. We're going to play this here. This for the match. Oh, well, my goodness me. We are going to have our first roll-off. Well, 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 what a big win that is. And I tell you, Europe are clinging on. No, this is, this is just wave the white flag, get me out of here. This man is simply unstoppable right now. The pressure on Dom now must be absolutely immense. Can't believe that. No. Not his night. Oh, he's looking to just shut the door, lock it, and throw away the key. And that's it. That, that's pretty much done. Needs to be good. And it is. We go to a roll off. This for the match. Got it. Brilliant. There it is. They're still alive, still kicking, still fighting. Needs at least nine and gets them. And he's got oh, the lot. He's, he's got the lot in the jackpot. And it's a point for Team USA. That's it. And he's finished the way he should be finished as well. With a strike. It's Europe dejected. It's America triumphant. A very impressive performance from the USA at last year's event. And if we look back at the roll of honour for the Weber Cup, it seems that once a team wins, they go on to dominate for a number of years. The Americans ruled between 2000 and 2002. Europe came back in 2003. Team USA once again claimed the next three years. Then things tightened between 2009 and 2012 with two wins apiece before five years of European domination was finally ended in 2018, with the US narrowing the overall score to 9-10. With two matches now played at this year's Weber Cup, there's been nothing to separate the sides so far. The tournament opened with the traditional Baker match, which saw the European challengers draw first blood in front of the first American crowd. Team USA fired back in the first singles match when Anthony Simonson decisively beat Jesper Svensson. A strong start for Team Europe in the Baker match was countered by the American Anthony Simonson in the singles, adding the first patch of red to the board with a commanding 33-pin victory over Jesper Svensson. Coming up next, Weber Cup debutante Jacob Butterf takes on the European captain Dom Barrett and the US captain Chris Barnes faces the experienced Stuart Williams. But before we join the play, a quick reminder of the rules. Matches are played over 10 frames, but there are no extra shots in the 10th frame. A strike is worth 30 pins, with the maximum score being the magical 300. A spare is 10 pins plus the pinfall of the first shot in the frame and actual pinfall after two shots in an open frame. Time now to join the action as Butterf takes on Barrett. It 
It's one point for a win, with 18 the overall target. And your commentators are Tim Mack and Jesse May. Dominic Barrett has played nigh on 50 singles matches in the Weber Cup for Jacob Butterf. This is but his first. Tim, how do you handicap this one? I, I tell you what, you, you, you said it earlier. With Dominic with 50 matches under his belt, he is obviously the veteran in this match. And uh, Jacobs, I think he's, he's got a little bit of nerves and uh, he's got a little bit of um, angst. He, he wants to get off to a good start. So obviously the, the experience factor goes to Dominic, but Jacob's a great player and he's been really, really dialed in this year with his bowling. Uh, he has to get comfortable on this lane though. The anchor of Team Europe starts it off with perfection. Good, good shot from Dominic. O opening shot comes light in the head pin. Gets a nice mix and strike. He'll be really happy with that. Now, Jacob is following Jesper Svensson. Jesper just used urethane on the lane, so there's going to be some more oil pushed down the lane. I actually think that's going to help Jacob because his ball's not going to hook as sharp as it normally would if he was the first lefty to start in the lane. So let's see if he uh, figures it out from the bigger match. Wow. Is that an unlucky leaf? Oh, my, that, that's the worst break in bowling. It's a solid nine for the for the lefty and the solid eight for the right-hander. That is a perfectly executed shot. Unique, uh, unorthodox style. Jacob, watch the ball drive right by the nine pin. It goes right by it, takes the five pin straight back, and that's just a, a horrific break in bowling. You were down on the floor in the lanes earlier, Tim. What's going on with the tactics so far? There was a change in ball. Y yes, um, Jacob, Jacob felt like he, he, he was seeing early hooks, so he's using one of his, his urethane balls that kind of controls the lane a little bit more. Uh, Dominic is using, I think he's on his third ball already after the ba Baker match, uh, Baker match, and now into the singles. So Do uh, Dominic's fa facing a little bit more carry down and a little bit more lane transition. So he's got to continue to continue to move left on the lane to continue to find that free push, so the ball doesn't hook early. Yeah, he's gathered all the way in the corner. That's come cross court. Ooh, did it hook too soon? Yeah, it was probably a little left the target as well. I mean, they're going to be really touchy in there. And Dominic's uh, margin for error isn't, isn't really really that big in that part of the lane. But um, it's a little close. He might have to change his hand position a little bit because you saw how hard, Jesse, that ball came hooked off the spot. Dominic is one of the best in the world at creating different roles with his hand. So he can get that ball to change direct a little less change of direction just with his hand. That's how talented he is, and that's why he's the great player that he's been for so many years. I think I think it's very important for Jacob to get comfortable. The sooner the better, because I think he's the catalyst for the American team. If he can get comfortable, they can they they can really really put the hammer down. Oh, we got the lead. The messenger for, ba for we call him Butters. <laughs> I call Chris. him Buttercup. <laughs> he gets the messenger. Chris Barnes showed a lot of confidence in his rookie by putting him up second. And uh, right now, Jacob's delivered. Yeah, right. You see the head pin come off the wall and do the damage. Watch the, watch the pin action. That's created from Jacob's incredible rev rate in his hand position. And the head pin comes flying off the wall, takes out the seven pin. Pressure on. Very lucky strike, high in the head pin. Dominic's gonna have to make a ball change or uh, an angle change. As you can see, his ball starting to hook. It's just hooking too early. Classic style of one of the greatest to throw in the world. I mean, if you wanna learn how to throw a bowling ball, just watch Dominic Barrett ball. But you'll see right there, the ball dives hard through the head pin and very fortunate to get the strike. And uh, Butter's style is so unorthodox. Uh, but it works for it. Yeah, the, the key in our sport, there it is again. Oh, another strike. The key in our sport, Jesse, is to repeat. How you get to the foul line, if you can do it the same sh same time, shot, shot to shot to shot the same way each time, I mean, that's the key. And Jacob is double jointed in his wrist, and he creates this unique position at the bottom of his, uh, at his swing and creates this incredible ball roll. He's a rookie by Weber Cup standards. But he's no rookie by bowling standards. I mean, he's got a major championship this year, and uh, he's a great, 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 great bowler. Barrett's kept pace with pinfall, but did he adjust? Another lucky strike. Wow, oh, man. <laughs> Is he dancing on ice here? He's got to be pleased with that. I mean, through the beak for a strike, and now he he goes crossover Brooklyn for a strike. 
<laughs> looks it's like amazing. he's uh, he's thanking, blessing his uh, his luck there. No doubt what, about it. <laughs> what would you whisper in his ear about the adjustment? Although he probably knows what he has yeah, to do. Yeah, he does. But I, I think it's a ball change, Jesse. I think he's got to go to a ball that doesn't read the lane as hard um, because it's 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 just changing direction too hard off the spot. <laughs> Good shot from Jacob there, flat seven. But I, I can tell you, he, he feels he looks comfortable on the lane after his first opening shot in the Baker. He's hit the pocket every single shot since then. So that's a really good sign for Jacob moving forward in this event. Should and, be no and problem. I mean, you know, essentially getting your spot down in, in in the pins there. That's all you can really do. Right. You just want to. All you can do is what, you let you execute the shot. You have a game plan. You hit your target. Get the right ball speed, right angle. Jacob's doing that right now, and he's hitting the, he's hitting the pocket every ball. Now it's just a matter of whether he's going to carry the ten pins or not. He'll get more comfortable as as the as the event goes on, and as you see on cue, here's a ball, here's a ball change for Dominic Barrett. As you predicted, that's closer in the pocket, but you see that ball was cleaner, and didn't and didn't read the lane as hard. Um, came up a little bit high in the head pin, left the four pin, but that was a really, really good shot from Dominic. He'll be happy with that. And he'll make some adjustments with that ball change moving forward. Shouldn't be any problem on the spare. Again, the spare ball across the lane, hard and straight. Very clean. Every flame has been closed so far. Very tight here. Although you have to say, Jacob Butters looks slightly more comfortable on the lane right now. He does. He actually he's hitting the pocket uh, consistently. And I, I, li I like it how you call him Jacob Butters. That's just <laughs> great. I love that. Butters. Uh, Carl Troops, uh, Kyle Troops said they call him Buttercup as yeah, well. Yeah, we right? bought Buttercup, Butters. Let's see if he can find some frosting on the Buttercup here. <laughs> ah, comes uh -oh. in a little light in the head pin. Leaves a tough spare. That's a tough spare. He's got, he's got the 6-9 up, and it, it's a tough spare going across the lane. Now, remember what I said earlier. He's following Jesper Svensson's transition. So you see that ball doesn't hook as hard down lane. That's some of the oil carrying down the lane. He's gonna, he might have to make a little bit of a change here to get his ball to read it off the break point a little bit harder coming and, off the spot. And are we going to see that happen more and more as the session goes on? Well, oh, he's stuck at the line. Oh. No problem. Yep. Whoa. Got lucky there. That was good. Uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see some changes uh, over the course of the session, depending on who, which bowlers are following one another. As you see, he, he falls right there at the end, almost falls over there, but um, was able to gather himself and uh, make the spare. But Dominic's in the lead from those two lucky strikes. Let's see if he can capitalize on, on that early fortune. Great shot. Not a minute to sit still. Dominic Barrett says, I don't care how I got here. I'm going to put the hammer down. Listen, he's been in this position before, right? You said 50, 50 singles matches, 50 plus singles matches, and the classic style. He's even further left into the lane with a ball that, as you see, it, it transitions off the spot a lot smoother than the previous ball he was using. And that's just the perfectly executed bowling shot. So consistent. And both these players Putting up very decent scoring so far. That's a good shot there. Good shot from Jacob. Gets the love tap on, on the four pin. The four pin comes off the wall and just love taps the seven pin to do the damage. <laughs> the love tap for the money. You, you watch his ball go through the pins and watch that four pin off the wall. Love tap right there. <laughs> and down goes the seven. And just in just for short me measure, he had the head pin coming across as well that might have hit it as well late. Welcome back to Las Vegas and Weber Cup 20, where the European captain Dominic Barrett has a slim advantage over the debutante Jacob Butterf in their singles match. We pick up the play at the start of the seventh frame with commentary from Jesse May and Tim Mack. Yeah, another good shot. Another good shot from Dom. Jesse, it seems the ball change was key. He made the change at the right time and he's moved deeper into the lane and put up the double. He's putting heat on Jacob, putting the pressure on. He seems like a very solid player with the lead. Dominic Barrett gives no quarter. 
Yeah, I mean, Dom, Dom's notoriously good in any position, but you, you don't want to give a bowler of his caliber. When he gets out in front of you, he's hard to chase down. There's no doubt about that. And all Buttriff can do is try and keep up and hope Dominic falters. That's the way you keep the pressure on. Another great shot from Jacob. Jacob's pulled a really good game. Uh, his ball doesn't have as much uh, much action with the curve right now. Yeah, exactly. it? it doesn't change direction as much. He's using the urethane ball, okay? So they don't they hook early and control the back part of the lane. And he uses that because his rev rate is, is so high that it allows him to control the back part of the lane to change his angles to get him to throw shots like he just threw. But, but Dominic's looking really good here since this ball changed. Let's see if he can capitalize on another. Pretty in shot. pink is this shot. bowling yeah. ball, and he is perfect over the last four, I believe. Another great shot from Dom. I mean, European captain trying to, trying to get out in front here early in, in this Weber Cup. Classic style, gets it off his hand, perfect balance. And I mean, that's how you throw the ball ball right there. Watch that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you're supposed to do. What a lion bear it is. And here, all the young talent, Jacob Buttruff. What an unusual <laughs> approach he has. His feet go everywhere. Yeah, he's, he, he kind of shuffles his feet up, up, up to the lane. But as I said earlier, as long as you repeat foul line back and do it the same way over and over and over again, that, that, that's the key in our sport. It's shot repetition. And Jacob looks like a mirror. Every shot looks exactly the same. And he comes in a little light pocket. Great job by the camera crew there with the, with the, with the light mix and strike there. Again, Dom is running out of room here. He's really up against the ball return. So let's see if he can continue to make great shots from the deep inside of the lane. <laughs> You're right. He is. I mean, there it is. How far can you go over? He, he's probably cheating every... Uh, a little bit left each shot because he knows that there's a lot of friction on the right in, on the right side of where he's at. Also, you take into this unique environment with the lights and the setting uh, that are burning on the oil, that are moving and transitioning the oil on the lane. Dominic's probably making little baby moves with each shot. Is this the opening that Team USA was waiting for? Well, we talked about it earlier, Jesse, off air, that we might have a tie. Here's the opportunity where if Jacob Butchev strikes here, they are all dead even going into the 10th frame. So it could be 236, 236. So this is a big shot in the match for, for, for Butters. Oh, this is, the, this is the biggest pressure shot of the Weber Cup for Jacob Butchev so far. He likes, he likes it. it. He likes it. <laughs> Liked it off his hand. Did oh, you see him man. put the hand up, right? He did. That's what it's all about. The rookie, was... the rookie coming out and putting up the big shot. That was the equivalent of a baseball player pointing out his home run. <laughs> it had barely left his hand. He jumped up in the air. There it yes. is. Puts the hand up in the air. <laughs> off the wall. Great reaction from, from, from Buttriff. And now it's, it's one shot for the point. Dom strikes. He puts all the heat on Jacob. What can he do? His first shot last time was way off. Can he make the adjustment here? Oh. Leaves a light shaker eight pin. He made it, it looked like he made it a little bit more of another move after the last shot came up high. And the ball just gets behind the head pin a little bit deeper. As you see, it gets a little further right and a little behind the head pin and almost the pin action almost does the damage. And he leaves not the nine, uh, the, the eight pin should be no problem on the spare. Solid shot, but Jacob Buttriff now facing up against Destiny. He can strike to win here. Strike to win. Anything else? Nine's a tie. Nine spares a tie. Eight is a lose. And uh, when you're practicing alone in the lane, those long hours, this is what you say. Strike, I win my match at the Weber Cup. Here it is. And this is for the USA to take a 2-1 lead. He didn't like it. Oh, he did not like it. Oh. Not only didn't he like it. Oh, my gosh. Did the pressure get to him? It was bad off his hand, Jesse. It was definitely right off his hand. He didn't like it like the last one you'll see. It's See that? It's right off his hand. It's right a target. And it, there's just not enough margin for error there where that ball's going to go right through the head pin and it splits. But that's the match. This shot doesn't matter. Nope, it's over. Dominic Barrett.
Barrett with Harris. the nine. He thought he jumped, but the blink came from Team USA and for Team Europe, the 2 1 lead. Hey, Sean, incredible, really incredible drama here early in the Weber Cup. They have all the experience, Team Europe, standing tall. USA, they've been flash, they've been light, but they're behind in the Weber Cup. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas and the 20th edition of the Weber Cup, where Dominic Barrett has just come through a tricky encounter against Jacob Butter to give Europe a 2-1 lead over the USA. He's now talking to Hannah Wilkes. Tom Barrett, you've got to feel a little bit like you got away with that one. I did, yeah, I got away with that. It's early in the event, we're kind of all getting used to the lane a little bit, and uh, it, I didn't really deal with the amount of hook that I had from further in, uh, as well as I should have done. Made a ball change in the middle. I got a lucky couple of strikes early. Made a ball change, and yeah, like you said, got away with that. For those that perhaps don't watch a lot of temp in bowling, what, why do you change ball? What difference does that make? It's kind of like having a whole set of golf clubs, really. So we have some bowling balls that are very strong, hook a lot, and really get into the oil in the lane. And we had other bowling balls that might get a lot longer, be sharper, smoother. So all our bases are covered. And then obviously. What we have to do as professionals is know our equipment very well so we can go from ball to ball and use it as a tool to strike. We've had three games, as we've mentioned. The lane is being re-oiled. It was your choice of the oil pattern uh, for this opening session. How is it playing out there? Because it has taken a little bit of time for everyone to get used to it. Yeah, I think uh, what hasn't been mentioned yet is the lane surface as well hooks a lot. So um, kind of the way it's maybe it's been installed or whatever else and the oil has a little bit of time to get into the lane maybe. We're not really sure because it's such a unique event. Uh, but it's definitely always plays a little bit tougher at the beginning, so that's why we picked maybe a simpler oil pattern. But as you can see, our Simonson bowled great, but it's been pretty hard for everyone else. Yeah, it was a little bit un unlucky at times as well in, in that last match that we looked at. Uh, this is where you want to be, isn't it? Three games in, you've got two points on the board. What's the message to the team at the moment? Well, first of all, we've got to all start bowling and get comfortable and then see how we are. I mean, <laughs> all I ever do up here is talk about cliches, and I hate it, but... If we, we bowl well, it, if we bowl well, it will take care of itself. And that's what we have to make sure we do. Yes, we bowled pretty good in that match. He lost, but you know, that's the main thing. If all four of us bowl well, we know we're going to win. Confirmation of the results so far, and it was Europe who took the opening Baker match. But Anthony Simonson hit back for the US with a comfortable win in the singles before Dominic Barrett, as we just saw, regained Europe's lead with victory over Jacob Butteroff. Coming up now, it's Chris Barnes against Stuart Williams. It's one point per win with 18, the magic number. And your commentators are Guy Kaminsky and Jesse May. Well, Guy, two players with acres of Weber Cup experience taking each other on here. Who is it more important to establish themselves in this match? For whom? Yeah. With this format, it's always the team that's behind in points on the scoreboard always feels the pressure, I'm afraid. Scoreboard pressure is a very real thing in this kind of format. But the, the nice thing to have here is the captain, the guy who's been around the block, who's done it all, seen it all. There is no better man you want playing for you right now. Classic righty is Chris Barnes, right? Yeah. If you were going to make a textbook, he'd be in the picture. <laughs> and that's the way you started out. I mean, Captain Dominic Barrett last time, it looked like he was throwing boulders half the match, and yet he managed to eke out a win. Is that what the experience does? Is that the kind of thing that Chris Barnes is also capable of? Yeah, all, all, all the great players in any sport have always had that ability to win. I mean, the first, Win ugly, right? Yeah, well, I mean, the first guy that everyone thinks about is Tiger Woods. I mean, he, I mean, 
you can't be that great because you can't be unbelievable every day. You have to find a way to win when it's just not quite right. Chris Barnes showed the way. Can Stu Williams match that? Ooh, left a hooker. Yeah, I, I, I always felt when I was playing is that the first shot, you just kind of want to hit the pocket. I mean, obviously, it's great to strike, but you really wanted to see the shape. Because in your mind, you visualize the shape. You want it. Yeah, so he'll see that. I mean, that was perfect. He can make, you can make small adjustments of that. You saw Dom last game. I mean, he, he didn't know where the pocket was for the first four frames. Yeah, I mean, and Simonson looked so comfortable on this. Would you say, even though Team USA is behind, that they're slightly happier with this pattern, or is it too early to tell? It's definitely too early to tell. All, all the captains are looking for right now is getting their players lined up and comfortable on the lane. You've seen a couple guys have a problem with their approach, getting the right ball choice. Although they do get time to practice beforehand, it's just different when you step onto the lane. Executing under pressure. That's the real skill. And look at Barnes. He had to answer for the USA. You can't make a better answer than that. Strike, strike. I mean, two absolutely perfect deliveries from Barnes. A little smirk on his face there. Totally happy with, with that. He said a fan in Michigan made him those shoes. Who doesn't want a pair of those ones he's got? USA all over. Yeah, just in case he didn't have enough USA on him. <laughs> if he didn't know what team he was playing for. But Stu, he has an example of a guy who perhaps on his resume doesn't have the CV like these other guys, but I can assure you is one of the best players in the Team Europe. There he goes. He's found his spot on the lane. When you're in the spotlight, yeah, you have to have an extrovert personality. You have to love being out there, and this guy lives and breathes for the Weber Cup. What is his reputation on tours, Stu? He's been around a long time, obviously. Yeah, I mean, been down many years, actually living in the States now. And it's due, so. Barnes perfect so far. This for the turkey. Ooh, what was that? Wow, that, that was really interesting. That ball really hooked. I mean, even Chris looks a bit surprised about the amount that ball hooked. It didn't look, it didn't look like he missed left which is traditionally what you would think when the ball goes through the nose but i almost want to say the ball just hooked very early wondering if he see he got it it really hooked is this makeable oh this is makeable i mean it's not like the other splits we had seen earlier on but straight down up. I imagine he's trying to Ooh, he oh. hit it smacked it that's brilliant. Close the spare, but that will open the door a bit for Team Europe. A strike here. And Stu Williams can take the lead. Yeah, they definitely helped him, but unfortunately, in the scoring format, the six really counts against you, um, you know, coming down the home straight now. Well, Stewie with an opportunity to go into the lead. Focus. Look at that game face. And he hit it solid. We, we can see that actually playing the lane a little differently. Chris trying to play a bit further to the right compared to Stu. Stu playing, you can see there, going through middle arrow, fourth arrow. Which you think is the better approach right now? Just three pins separate them through the first three frames. And the second. Yeah, tough break. Also looks like Chris has moved a little bit more inside the, inside the lane. He definitely came away from that spot where it hooked so early. So moved his feet left. Will Barnes be worried about his ball right now, or is that uh, a little too early to tell? I think the ball choice is probably correct. Just maybe moved his feet a little bit left uh, on the approach. Straight knockout to close. But for Stu Williams now, the opportunity guy.
to really take charge. And I mean, Team Europe, so far in this Weber Cup, it just seems like they're consistent. Not flashy, but they're there. Every time Team USA gulps, Team Europe is there to pick up the pieces. I mean, th there is a reason why they did win five years in a row. Because they are so clinical. They love, they love being under the pressure. And they don't give points away. They make the op opposing team win them. Yeah, that's, they make you fight for every point. This is a big for the momentum here. Stu Williams, can he strike it? You can see Stewie and Chris with their thumb in the bowling ball just don't have as much power as the two-handed players to get the corner pins out sometimes. These young kids today with their two hands, Jesse, you can't believe that the amount of power they bring into the pocket these days. And will the, the captains now be rethinking the order of play or is it still the right thing to do to put someone like Stu out first with the new oil? Yeah, well, I mean, essentially it all depends on who wins the point, really. But the theory has always been the straighter players um, come out early, and then you get your two-handed players who really hook the lane, so to speak. Um, Simonson was amazing last year. He said he could play it straight, he could hook it. He did a mul multitude of things last year that, that gave the captain options, because that's what you want as a captain. You want to have options. It's been a couple of spared frames here. Barnes looking to shut the door right now. That looked sloppy. Yeah, that, re that really hooked early again. And didn't really look like he missed his mark. It just looked the ball, read the lane early, and just hooked too soon. Uh, the, the players obviously want the ball to hook. It's just about when it hooks. If you look at going down the lane, he's definitely moved inside. He's trying to follow Stewie inside. And I mean, the look on Chris's face, he did not expect that. Almost no. like he was happy with the shot, and the ball did something crazy. Yeah, it's exact, exactly right. And that, you saw that with Dom as well. When he, we started, he had that ball hooking too much. He obviously made a ball change and moved his feet left. So it'll be interesting to see what Chris is thinking right now. That's a man with a worried look on his face. It Could sure potentially is. go down 3-1. It's very early, but that scoreboard pressure starts to build. Talk about the stone face. Stu Williams, solid as a rock. Say, if you can't keep up with me, I'll just take the point. Oh, that looks so good, and he loves it. Look at Stewie. He's starting to show the body language now. And that's where it just seems like on the real pressure points, Team Europe so far has been basically impassive. I mean, I, I can't say it enough just about how important he is. He's a real personality of the team. He's a Carl Troop of of Europe. Welcome back to the Weber Cup, the annual 10-pin showdown between the US and Europe. The European team started well at this year's event, taking the opening match. The US hit back in the second, Europe regained the lead in the third. This is now the fourth, and Stuart Williams has a slight advantage over the American captain, Chris Barnes. Commentary from Guy Kaminsky and Jesse May. Oh, that'll make him feel better. Is he back on track? Back on track? I mean, I still think it hooked a lot for Chris. He's traditionally a guy who likes to throw it a little bit straighter. He likes to control the pocket, so to speak. But that ball's really coming off hard off it. Of his break point. <laughs> yeah, that is a big relief. There must be no worse feeling in bowling than when you're just totally lost on the lane. I don't know where to throw it. I mean, it, we've all experienced it, but on a single lane, uh, under this pressure, representing your country on live TV, it, be it becomes a very lonely place out there. And there's Stewie, have a look at him. The pressure, the sweat. There's a fan in that ball return there where they dry their hand before they put, that, before they put their fingers in the ball. This really will put the nail in right now. Oh, yeah, it's hot down there under the lights. A strike would be huge. God, that looked perfect. Yeah, you can, you can see how Stewie's controlling the pocket. He loves it. 
have a bit of that team USA. I tell you, on paper, people were thinking this was going to be an early day for Team Europe, not to be. USA is going to have to play good if they want to get this one. Yep. The only good thing is, is that Chris has seen this all before. He won't panic. One thing he won't do is panic. There's a long way to go in this tournament, but he's going to remember this information. And That looked much better. That looked absolutely perfect. That was flush in the 1-3 pocket. And that could go a long way towards writing this match if Stu Williams blinks. Aren't you have a look there. At that shot. You, can, you can see Chris now also just right of the middle arrow there. He's moved inside the lane. If he can repeat that every time, no danger for yeah. Barnes. Stewie and Chris now building a very similar part of the lane. And when you're only using one lane, because normally traditionally you build two lanes, you alternate each side, is that the traffic through the lane is double. So your move with your feet has to happen quicker than normal. Oh, it was a good shot there by Stu. Just in the zone. There's the super fan for Team Europe. I understand he travels everywhere. The yeah, Weber I mean, Cup. it's amazing to see how many supporters have come across. The, you know, that's how the Europeans have taken to, to this event. And it's so great to see so many of them coming over the pond and supporting here in Las Vegas. But now, we've now got a five-pin game, assuming that Stu makes a spare. And that's where that six early on for Barnes is coming back to haunt him. Oh! What happened there? Wow. He's you just left it wide. You just never, ever see that happening, the guys at this level. And it didn't look like he slipped. It just must have been a bad shot. No, his balance looked good. That's just a major mistake. So all of a sudden, Barnes is now ahead by six. He dropped the ball. Stu Williams. Does oh, if he loses this match, and, he, and he'll look back in that frame, and that will be lost. For Barnes now, don't let up. The door is open. Slam it shut. Oh, he, he <laughs> Look at it. that, this pub. You haven't won that many tournaments over the years without being that lethal. I mean, that was such a gift from Stu Williams. I cannot believe it. At this level, those look, look, kind of mistakes can lose a match. Oh, he jumped on him there. I mean, look at Barnes. And even he also uses the body language to send a signal to tell Stewie to rub it in that he's made that mistake. But can Stewie forget about it now and answer that strike? <laughs> well, no bother. Coming down with two frames to go. I'm not sure if Chris will give him a chance. Right now, the point is in... Chris Barnes' hands. He needs two more strikes in the next two frames, and there's nothing Stewart can do, all because of that 10 pin miss. And this is where this is where champions show their medal, right? I mean, Chris Barnes knows from this position he needs to close out. Yep, we refer to the ninth frame as a foundation frame. The ninth and tenth frame, or oh, a little smirk, he looks pretty chuffed. I've seen that smile over the years. You cannot throw it better than that. That is as good as you can throw a bowling ball. That is so perfect. He's one shot away from tying this up to all. All Stu can do now as we watch this replay, this is this absolutely splits the 8-9. That's what we're all looking to do. Barnes has been there and done it. All Stu Williams can do is put the pressure back on. You've got to ask him the question. You've got to make him throw the last shot. He has to have it. Uh oh Doesn't like it. Doesn't oh, like cut it. it off. And that is a point gone for Europe. Yeah, he def... It looked like he just didn't get through the ball. The ball didn't get down the lane. I wonder if Stewart just tried to make that ball hook a bit more to get the 10 pin out. I mean, are we seeing some early nerves in this Weber Cup guy first? Yep, and that we, is the point. I mean, yep. 
First we see Jacob yeah. versus a Jacob Stutter, and then Stu Williams. It's both times it's the captain of the team who uh, carried through. First Dominic Barrett shuts down Jacob, and now Chris Barnes says to Stu Williams, USA is here. I mean, Chris Barnes, we saw him have trouble early on. He's made the adjustment, and he's come back with four strikes just to make it five. What a captain's performance. That's why he's the captain of USA. Chris Barnes tying it up 2-2. Setting the standard is Barnes for the rest of his team. This one tied up 2-2. Does Team Europe have to start thinking about adjustments? I don't really know. I mean, Stewie will just wonder where that game went away from him. He had it in control the whole time. I mean, he struggled to get the temp, and out there it is again. He changed ball just to have a look. But I think Stewie will just wonder how that got away from him. It looked like he had it under control. But unfortunately, in this game, the small details make the difference. But if this is anything to go by, we would have crack a week ahead. And this is that same shot. No danger that time. A little bit of a gasp from Team Europe. And Stu Williams will wonder where it's gone wrong. But for Chris Barnes, big smiles. He's put the USA back in this. I saw the grin on your face with your opening strike and you glanced at the American fans in the arena here. How much are you enjoying, first of all, having the Weber Cup on home turf? It's nice being the, uh, the crowd favorite for a change, that's for sure. Yeah. I think the louder these guys get, the better we're going to bowl. There's your, there's, your, <laughs> there's your instructions, guys. Do keep it up. Uh, now, that game, like we saw in the earlier match as well, it really swung both ways. Some, some unluckiness for you, some, some misses for Stu. Do you feel a little bit like you, you know, you've got away with that one a little bit, like Dom did earlier on? Uh, there's going to be so many ebbs and flows, and there's going to be a lot of matches that come down the ninth and 10th frames. Uh, you know, the last one went the other way. This one went this way. Uh, you know, we'll have to take advantage of more of those opportunities than they do, and ultimately that's what happened in this match. For the past couple of years, by this point in the Weber Cup, we've seen uh, one team sort of lead the way and create a bit of a bumper and a bit of a buffer in terms of points. How important is it for you to push on and get the next point now in the bag and, and steal the momentum? Well, of course, we'd like to, to continue on the, the route we're on now. We, we feel like we could be in a little better shape than we are, but it could have went the other way as well. So. Uh, you know, back to even. Uh, all of our guys have had a look at the lane now, and we're getting a little more comfortable as we go. And we feel like the more comfortable we get, the better it's going to be. We're halfway through the opening session of this year's Weber Cup, and with an even spread of red and blue on the board, there's still nothing to separate the two teams. Coming up next time, last year's MVP Kyle Troop takes on the returning Oscar Palermo. And two of bowling's most exciting young prospects meet again as Anthony Simonson takes on Jesper Svensson.